All right, let's go ahead and solve a question that involves an open channel. Okay, in this particular case, what I'm looking at is I have a semicircular shaped storm drain channel, and I have a video on this. I said that this is the best design in terms of um, flow per unit cross sectional area. And what I say is in this particular case, it is two meters is the diameter, not a radius. Diameter is two meters, so this is one meter over here. And the slope is 1%. I'll talk about that. The flow rate for a channel fully filled with water is closest to what is the value? Okay, that is the question that I'm trying to assess. There are two formulas that I discuss, and I said that the Manning's equation is um, more accurate for these kind of flows. And if the flow was not fully, let's say over here as well, then what will happen is the Hazen Williams equation may be more accurate. But I'm going to go ahead and solve from both aspects so that you're familiar with how to use both equations, okay, in case they ask you. All right, let's go ahead and do it. First of all, um, well, actually, before going ahead, let's talk about this 1%. What is, what's up with this 1%? That is the S value. That is the slope of the hydraulic grade line, okay? S value is 1%. So what you should do is if you convert that to, uh, basically, it's going to be 0 0.01, all right? Um, so this is, by the way, a unitless. And I don't want to make a generalized comments, but here in the state of Florida, the minimum storm drainage channel should have half a percent, okay, for uh, about some certain size. They must have it. So this is like a double of it. So this is a good design that we have, okay, 1%. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, write the Manning's equation. The velocity was given. So I'm going to actually go ahead and say that, hey, Q is equal to VA, right? You remember that? Uh, this is given in your uh, reference manual. I believe they also give you the one that's multiplied by 80 as well. But uh, in my review, I only did the velocity because you can easily convert them. There's not there's enough formulas going around. So let's do this way. Q will be V. Uh, v is written as 1 over N. And I just multiply by A just to save some time. The RH is the hydraulic radius to the power of 2 thirds. And I have this S value that I have up there to the power of one half okay um, okay it's all good and nice except well let's look what we know what we don't know area I'll get back to it but it's manageable RH I have a video on this I will not solve it this time around okay and I'll put a link to it so you can watch it and as we know yeah this is the troublemaker right here and okay so I recommend that if you are not looking at the civil engineering section of this manual, you kind of memorize this, okay? This N is, is equal to 0 0.013 for concrete. It may change for the material that's given to you in the AFE exam, but it's not going to divert significantly from this value that I'm writing, all right? So this is a fairly nice thing to remember, okay? This is for concrete. So let's go ahead and uh, calculate this, Q, A. Well, let's look at it. The thing is, if this was a full circle, I will get pi R squared. Is, right is the area so now I have half of it so that will be pi so pi r squared by 2 n is 0 0.013 right rh okay now I'm going to put a link in here I'll cal I calculated the di hydraulic diameter for a similar circular shape was just the diameter of it okay uh, and rh will be the diameter hydraulic divided by 4 okay um, and I have a lecture video on it. I don't explain this in my review. Okay, why why this is four, not two? Okay, so I will put a second link here to my lecture video in case you are wondering where is this coming from, this number four. Okay, um, but in here now this time around this is given as two, so my RH is half, right, half meter. So okay, so let's write zero point five to the power of two thirds, and the S is zero point zero one to the power of one half. Once I go out and punch this into my calculator, I will get myself 7.6 meter cube per second. As you can see, this is a fairly large number because it's per second. Every second there will be 7.3 meter cube of water flowing in this drainage channel. Okay, so I'm kind of done, but I'm now I'm going to do the other approach just to illustrate you. Okay, but if you if you want to stop watching, this is the answer as you see here, right, the B. But let me do the Hazen Williams equation as well. Uh, to make sure that you know those two are close to each other. Here's what it looks like 0 
times a. a is not in the equation, I just multiply by a. c, rh to the power of 0 0.63, and then s to the power of 0 0.54. Um, okay, let's start. 0 0.85. a is the same, pi r squared by 2. Note that I'm not using hydraulic radius, I'm using a proper uh, radius of the cross section, right? I'm calculating the cross section. C. Here's the thing. I, I mentioned when I'm reviewing it's typically from 100 to 150, that's the range. For concrete, it's typically 130 because it's smooth, okay? So it's going to be 130. The smoother it is, the higher the value. Times the RH, we calculate as 0 0.5 to the power of 0 0.63, 0 0.01 to the power of 0 0.54. And then, bam, when you put this into a calculator, you get yourself 9.3 meter cube per second. Okay? As you can see, this Hazen Williams equation has overshoot the Manning's equation. Okay? And I would say, like I mentioned before, this is the more accurate number as opposed to that. But the numbers even doesn't matter, right? Look at the choices. All right. So, thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something from this particular segment.